Hey, how's it going, everybody? Charlie Wilson here, AK Sensor Charlie. Welcome back. Uh, we got some more Mike Burnfire videos. Uh, uh, yeah, these have been uh, becoming pretty popular on the channel, so uh, we're gonna go through a lot of these, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I'm not complaining about it. It's uh, I, I do like to vary it up between my dumb anime videos and this. Uh, and I haven't done a Maxor video in a while, so I've got to get back to doing that too. But thanks everybody for the support and all the new subs and everything. It's been amazing. So thank you. Um, yeah, I, almost 100 subs in like the last seven days. So thanks a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and we're, I'm getting more regular with my videos and uploading, so usually two a day, but, uh, three if I'm lucky, if I can find the time. Uh, so yeah, we got Bradley slash gloves. I don't know what this is all about, uh, but, uh, let's check it out. Oh. Were you also required to clear up Bradley at one point? Oh, okay. Why would they call you a small arms repairman? Um, I was going to say, I didn't know if it was a name or not. Because technically a Bradley is small arms. Yeah, yeah sure, why not? As far as the army is concerned, the M242 chain gun on the front of a Bradley is considered small arms. Good grief. So are 155 millimeter mm. howitzers. I, I don't know how much larger <clears throat> small guns can get. Uh, I think their logic behind it was, well, it's small enough that a person could theoretically move it, so it must be small <laughs> arms. Oh, the truck broke down. Get our small arms repairman in over here. Yeah, a six-cylinder engine is kind of like a gun. It kind of. I, I would tell the story about me having to clear the Bradley, but it is a long story, and it kind of makes me really angry. I want to hear it. So one night, it. I'm sleeping okay. in my barracks. <laughs> Someone comes and starts pounding on my door and wakes me up. Specialist, get up, get up. There's someone on the phone for you. All right, fine. So I go answer the phone. And it's somebody from one of the other companies, and they're telling me, we need you to come over to this gate over here and uh, clear Bradley. What do, you, what do you mean clear Bradley? Well, we need you to come make sure that the main gun on this Bradley... I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I ever got, like, anywhere close to a tank when I was uh, in the Navy in Iraq. Uh, I, I really don't think I saw any. Uh, it was usually, like, MRAPs and up-armored Humvees and shit. Never think... I don't think I ever... I wouldn't long think I'd even be able to recognize one, honestly. There you go. Bradley is cleared. I mean, I can do that theoretically... I haven't worked on one since I was in, like, job training, but all right, where, where's the gunner? Well, he's gone. Where's the driver? He's gone, too. Um, where's the tank commander? He is also gone. Where? where? Else? <laughs> when they, they get raptured? Gone, I assumed they meant that everybody Died. in this Bradley had been killed and they had towed it back to the gate and that they needed me to come clear it before they brought it into the base because... You can't just be driving a armored vehicle around with a 25 millimeter chain gun loaded on it through a base with people in it. Yeah. Why not? Well, you, you got <laughs> to <laughs> clear it first. And then they would just rip 12 rounds yeah. through the side of a building. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. So the next day I found out from somebody else that what had happened is some of the people on gate guard had noticed that there was just a Bradley driving up and down one of the main routes by itself oh, with no other what? vehicles with it. That, that's abnormal. They're normally part yeah, of a caravan, a right? Yeah, they're convoy. normally part of a convoy. Thank you. Why is this Bradley driving around by itself? So they get in a Humvee, they drive out to there, and they find this Bradley. They have to get in its way because it, it keeps trying to drive away. That's so weird. They can't get a hold of him on any on any. Ra yeah, my uh, whole inclination would be to think that it's uh, like enemy, like somebody just random civilian got a hold of it and learned how to drive it, I guess. <laughs> that's weird, man radio frequencies so they basically just park right in front of it and flag him down and take like 20 minutes to coax this driver out of the vehicle reassuring him that yes in fact they are u.s soldiers and no they're not going to try and kill him the moment he gets out of the vehicle I, i'm still not sure why he was driving around by himself oh i'll get to that what happened was fun for fun <laughs> was part of a armored vehicle convoy they get lost they had driven through five different areas of operation and this Bradley got hit with an IED. Oh. Everybody was a little shooken up, but they were okay. So they moved the Bradley to a different spot in the convoy. Kept going. It got hit with another IED. Jesus. So they moved it to another spot in the convoy. Oh, just wow. Deck chairs on the Titanic. And it got <laughs> hit with another IED. Oh, my God. It's still, yeah. At this point, wow. this Bradley has been hit with three IEDs now. 
the gunner and the tank commander of this Bradley suddenly decide, you know what? Fuck this. I'm done being in this Bradley. So they get out of the Bradley and leave the driver, who is a 19-year-old kid yeah. and has never been yeah. outside the wire in Iraq before, oh, no. in the vehicle by himself. Oh, no. And then they start the convoy back up. That's not good. Ten minutes later, guess what happens? He gets hit by another oh, one. No. The Bradley gets hit with another Jeez. IED. This one is... I've never been hit with an IED when I did convoy security, so, uh, yeah, that's, I've seen I, a bunch of IEDs go off close, but none, yeah, that's crazy. Four. So bad Four. that it knocks out the comms in the vehicle, meaning that they, the driver can no longer talk to anybody else. The driver hits his head against the inside of the vehicle, gets knocked unconscious. That's leadership, too. That's goes, bad leadership. He's got to be dead and leaves. Yep, that is bad leadership. Is Somebody just got to get fired. After being hit four times, and they leave him completely forgetting the first part of the. Of the uh oh. Oh, of course, my uh, internet wants to uh, be a real piece of shit, doesn't it? Right when we're getting into the nitty gritty, and of course the. This is what you get with your five G internet, folks, because <laughs> I can't uh, get any better internet than this. Uh. Fucking hell, man. Ugh, I can't do fucking that. How about 480p? Can you handle 480p? Oh, my God. This is what you have to deal with with uh, my recordings. I could just edit this out, but I don't think I'm going to. Just to give you guys an idea of the bullshit that I have to go through. Uh, can't even handle 480p. That's sad. That's That's not good. I wonder. Anyway, continuing. You can skip over that part the if you want. Creed, I will never I leave would. a fallen comrade. They just leave him. Didn't even grab his dog tags? No, nothing. The rest of the convoy just went, fuck it. Brrr, drove off. Driver wakes up. He's suffered a serious concussion. Doesn't know where he is. Doesn't know why he's in, the si in a Bradley by himself. Doesn't know where anybody else is. Or why he's bleeding from the side of the head. Jeez. Can't reach anybody on the radio. The Blue Force tracker system is down, so he can't figure out where anybody yeah, else is. that's bad. So he just starts doing the only thing he can think to do, Back which forth. is drive up and down the main route all by himself, <laughs> oh, wow. looking for the rest of his convoy, because he assumes there's no way they would leave me behind. Uh, Why would they leave me? God oh, damn, the story's kind of dark. This yeah. poor 19-year-old kid got left all by himself in the middle of Iraq because his tank commander and his gunner decided they didn't want to be in a vehicle that got blown up anymore. It seems so irresponsible to leave him there. Yeah. It was incredibly irresponsible of pretty much everybody in that convoy. Mm -hmm. The fact that not a single person went, um, why are we just leaving Private Snuffy in this vehicle all by himself? Yeah, you didn't have to give him that name. I can only hope that the <laughs> lieutenant or officer who was in charge of that convoy got his ass handed to him and got court-martialed and was never in a position of command ever again. It is incredibly reprehensible and is one of the reasons why I got out of the military. One of the oh, very many. many. One of the many reasons. I have a similar story. One time I was left in charge of guarding the toilets. Oh, that's a good and job. And I used one of the toilets and I clogged it. And I had to unclog it, but we didn't have access to the supply cabinet. Oh, so I cleared no. it manually. Oh, God. No. With your hands? Yeah. Oh, no. That's, that's fucked up, man. Dude, I was a plumber. Yeah, uh, when I was in the CBs, I would never. No, even with gloves, I don't think I would do that. The, oh, oh, why? Like, I, I know plumbers are used to dealing with shit, but that's 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 not good. Why did you do that? Oh, you gotta do what you gotta do. No, you don't yeah, actually. So. No, Some, it's kind of like the same thing for me. You don't uh, have yeah, to. No, getting left by your unit in Iraq to die is totally the same thing as having to clear a toilet yeah. with your hands. <laughs> we both suffered. My main complaints are that most of the time the army was so disorganized and so stupid about what it would use its resources for. It was just infuriating to me. Sometimes military incompetence can be funny. Well, it's funny now. It's horrifying. <laughs> it's funny now. Our base sergeant major <laughs> while I was in Iraq had the biggest hard on for making sure that everyone still had their seatbelts on while they were driving military. Well, vehicles. yeah, I mean that's normal. He would sit outside in a Humvee. No, that's maybe. on one of the main routes and stop convoys. Oh, that's not that normal. Were not part of his command or even his jurisdiction, and walk up to each vehicle individually and make sure that everyone in the vehicle had a seatbelt on. This sergeant major 
would have his driver park the Humvee in the exact same spot every day. And eventually, one of the local insurgents oh. realized, hey, somebody parks a Humvee in this same spot every single day and shot the gunner in the neck. Oh. The insurgents killed the seatbelt checker. No, insurgents killed the gunner of the God seatbelt damn, checker man. because there's no fucking justice in this world. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Our I base also had this big old Jesus. blimp with a multi-million yeah. dollar digital... Uh, pretty much every base has that, uh, or did have that. Uh, yeah. It's uh, checks for people planting IEDs and stuff like that. It's crazy. Little infrared camera hanging from the bottom of it. I'm sorry, did you say... Not oh, unlike blimp. a Chinese yep, spy balloon. Big old blimp. Like Looks kind of like that. But a little bit smaller. Nobody could ride in it. It just had a very expensive digital infrared camera that could see long distances. Instead of using the blimp to look outside the base and see if insurgents were trying to blow us up, our base commander used the blimp to look inside the base to make sure people weren't going over the five. Oh, you piece of. Make sure they were wearing their seatbelts. What a good use of resources. A lot yeah. of douchebag. Uh, <laughs> just made me well, angry. I was issued a belt-fed machine gun. <clears throat> I don't know why. I think probably because somebody in my chain of command was mad at me. <laughs> so they gave me an M249 because they were like, fine, make him carry around this 13-pound piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. I discovered on a firing range <laughs> okay. that if you use this machine gun while wearing Nomex shooting gloves, they, there was the potential they melt? that the glove could get caught in between oh, the trigger right. and trigger <laughs> Do guard, they melt? Thus making the machine gun <laughs> continue to fire even when you release the trigger. Sweet. First, I actually talked to my chain of command and said, hey, this is really unsafe. Can I cut the trigger finger off of my Nomex glove so that I don't accidentally have a runaway gun and shoot somebody? Was the Nomex glove issued to you? Yes. Uh, oh, you can't do no, you that. can't do that. Well, no, they were issued to me, but the, the Nomex gloves are considered an expendable. Oh, uh, expend okay. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. And they said, you know what? That's a really excellent safety concern, specialist. No. Thank you for bringing that up to us. Why don't you go ahead and do that? And I went, okie dokie. Oh, right. So I cut the trigger finger off my Nomex glove. Well, somebody yelled at you? a bunch of other people saw me running around with a glove that had one finger cut off of it. And they went, that looks cool. So oh. they cut all the fingers off their gloves. Oh, brilliant. I know. And then literally the next day at formation, everyone got yelled at because a bunch of people were going around cutting the fingers off their Nomex gloves. And their excuse was, yeah, but I saw Specialist Zach do it, so that <laughs> means I can do it too. No. Specialist Zach had a legitimate safety concern. You guys are just freaking idiots. It's nice to have a story about your leadership that doesn't exemplify how stupid they were. I felt validated. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, uh, that made me more mad than any of the other videos. Not at them, but just mad in general at the chain of command and all these higher-ups looking for something to do. Looking to make themselves seem important so they can, you know, uh, really uh, score high on their evals, I guess. So it goes. That's the way she goes. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, sorry for the little uh, fuck up in the middle of that video. Um, yeah, yeah. I have. I live in a place in Tucson that uh, is not really remote, but it's um, it's hard to get internet here. Hopefully, maybe soon we can solve that problem. Either if I move or if I um, figure out a better way for internet. I'm talking to like one of the neighbors because one of them has like a. They have cakes, communications. So we'll, we'll figure that one out. I don't know. I'd love to do live streaming. But anyway, uh, yeah, there you go. There's your uh, there's your Mike Burnfire video. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. Like and, likey and subscribey. I have to make sure. That's my thing. You know, it's a little thing I do around here. Uh, yeah, but please do. Um, and thanks for all the support. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Um,